welcome to We Need Answers. Do you like quizzes? Yes. Yeah. Well, you'll like this because it is one. But <laughs> this is a quiz show with a bit of a difference because all the questions tonight have come from you, the public. Um, how? Well, there's a member of the public. She could be anyone. People like her and you and all sorts of members of the public have asked questions to one of those text message answering services. There's one. And we have collected a whole database of their answers. Now, tonight, we'll be asking our favourite questions from our enormous fat database to two celebrity contestants. <laughs> yes, yeah, celebrities, better than real people. Um, <laughs> I'm your host, Mark Watson. Just tell you a bit about myself. I'm left-handed, same as Obama. A good sign. <laughs> and uh, here to help me out are two other men. Please welcome Alex Horn and Tim Key. <laughs> so, Alex, uh, first of all, can you tell us a bit about what you'll be contributing to the show this evening? Yes, well, I'm right-handed, and I'll be using that hand to summon graphics and sound and lights. It's unusual for a TV programme, but it means I can come up with things like this at a touch of a button. Graphics. And you see that there, that is actually a, it's, it's a pie chart. It's a pie chart saying what graphics I'll do. All the graphics. I'll do, <laughs> I'll do all the sounds, any, any sound you want. There's a, there's a... <laughs> I don't know, I don't know what that one is. It could be a coot, it could be a coot. Um, a coot. Not all the lights. A very small sliver of lights. <laughs> I'll be, I've got a lamp, that's all I've got, the lights. <laughs> I've got a lamp. Ah, oh, there we are, yes. <laughs> Meanwhile, Tim Key is our question master. Tim, can you give us an idea of what you'll be doing this evening? <clears throat> it's right. There we are. Uh, well, uh, that should have whetted your appetite sufficiently. Now, this week's show, like all of our shows, is themed. Alex, can you explain the idea of the weekly theme? Sure. Well, a theme is like a topic or an idea. And uh, <laughs> themes, themes could include things like nature. You could have, nat you could have a nature-themed nature programme. Theme. Or a music-themed programme. Winter, winter, winter sports. You could have winter sports. I've got fruit. We've got, yes, yes, you could have winter, winter sports. sports. Winter you could have a sex-themed show. But this, this show is themed with reading. <laughs> by the way, it's reading theme. What is your favourite book, Alex? I really like uh, Mother Tongue by Bill Bryce. Oh. Ah. And Tim? Yep, same. There you are. <laughs> So, that was a bit of book talk, and if you enjoyed that, you'll love the rest of the show, because we have got two literary contestants. We're ready to meet the contestants. Yay! Let's meet the contestants! Let's meet the contestants. Let's meet the contestants. Let's meet the contestants. Yes, let's meet the contestants. Our reading theme let's meet should the suit our first guest. Let's meet She's the a writer. She's an academic. She's an Australian. She's even a woman. It is let's Jermaine Greer! <laughs> Our second contestant couldn't be much more different from Jermaine. She's from the other side of the world. He's from here. She wrote the female eunuch. He didn't bother. He's a broadcaster, novelist, children's laureate, Michael Rosen. <laughs> So, uh, Greer, Rosen, five letters in each name, it couldn't be better poise. Uh, uh, let's run through the scoring system, shall we? Yes, I think so, Mark. All right, then, audience. Uh, for a right answer, they will receive two points. For a wrong answer, nothing at all. But one point if you get it quite right, which means it's sort of... Yeah, it's, it's quite right. Yeah, it's quite right. OK. Contestants, are you ready? Definitely. Tim, are you ready? Mm, definitely. Well, I think we're ready to go. <laughs> The first round tonight is called Burning Issues and Fiddly Questions. Let's play We Need Answers! <laughs> You've got your questions. <laughs> You've quite finished, Jermaine. <laughs> so, <clears throat> here we go. All these questions will be either about normal things or about the theme. Remember, you're trying to match the answer the text answering service gave to the normal members of the public. Let's play. <laughs> Question number one. This is to you, Jermaine. Uh, as I say, some will be about reading, some will be just sort of general. Uh, this one is about cannibalism. <laughs> How many hot dogs can you, the letter U, make out of the human body? <laughs> oh. So someone has texted that in, uh, presumably hoping to eat other people. <laughs> 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 
500. OK, here's the answer, Jermaine. A top brand of Frankfurter weighs 58 grams each. If a person weighs 12 stone... Which they do. Yes. 60% <laughs> would be viable meat. Making 695 hot dogs, you're quite right. She's yes, quite, quite right. right. Yes. 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 Cool. Cool. Right. Yeah, yeah. Michael, this is a question for you. Yeah. How many words will the average human speak in their lifetime? Ooh. Ooh. Yes. Yes. It's many... four million exactly. Oh, is it? During a human lifespan of 75 years, an average man says 54 million words. You forgot words like cake and rubber. Yeah. <laughs> and then you factor in bucket and you're nearly there. Yeah. <laughs> On average, females say 191 million. Wow. Goodness Whoa! gracious me. Shut a box! <laughs> but nobody's listening. Yeah. <laughs> makes a joke with bite, as she's done throughout her career. Jermaine, we yeah. come to you. This is our first question on our theme of reading. How's your literature? It's They're good. fine, thank good, you. Good, good, good. <laughs> Let's see just how well-read Jermaine Greer is. What is Dennis the Menace's dog called? <laughs> Spot. Ooh, there was some win audible wincing. Yeah. That was the sound of audible wincing, Jermaine. I'm afraid I'm going to have to hand that over, Jermaine. <laughs> oh, Tim, can you just clarify when you are allowed to hand questions over? Uh, yes, I will sometimes hand questions <laughs> over. <laughs> Mike. Mm. What is the name of Dennis the Menace's dog? I'm going to go with Ganasha. <laughs> oh! <laughs> yes, and I, I don't need to tell you, he's an Abyssinian wirehaired tripe hound. <laughs> Michael. Yes. Um, this next question is, again, about our theme of reading, but it's also a sexy question. Oh, sexy question. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> On what page is the description of Lady Chatterley's orgasm in the Penguin 1993 edition? <laughs> And this has presumably been texted in by someone who's bought it and thought, I'm not going to bother about description. <laughs> uh, after page 100... Ooh. So 100 and pages before wasted. 150. Ooh, between wow. 100 and 150, says Rosen. I don't agree with the large area you've given me between the two pages, but it's right! Yeah! That's yeah. a clever way of answering. <laughs> Very clever. Uh, Tim, can you tell us precisely where the uh, so-called orgasm occurs? Yes, it's on page 134. <coughs> uh, Alex, can you just... Um... <laughs> so, here we go, then. <laughs> she could only wait. Wait. And moan. In spirit, as she felt him inside her. Oh, hello. <laughs> Withdrawing. Withdrawing and contracting. It's disgusting. I mean, it's... that's a plumbing manual. It's not a plumbing manual. It's also not an orgasm. <laughs> Jermaine, question to you: What's yes. the only word in the English language that has four double letters next to each other? Ooh. Four Ooh. double letters next to each four other. Four repeated letters. <laughs> mm, mm. It's it, English. Mm. This word we're looking for. Uh, I think. I would Oof. probably say it's the most English word I've ever seen. Well, certainly up there. <laughs> Quicker, please, Jermaine. I... Uh, yeah. Sub-bookkeeper. <laughs> oh, look, that's not a proper word. <laughs> yes, you're right, it looks like a complete nonsense word, but, Tim, sub-bookkeeper is a real word, isn't it? It's a real word, and I'm going to give the word to Jermaine. There we are, dearie. <laughs> oh, and that sound, which is Christmassy, means it's the end of the round! <laughs> And at the end of that round, the scores are one point to Jermaine Greer, but out in front with four points, Michael Rosen. <laughs> Michael, mm. is it true that you used to work for the BBC and you left uh, saying that you couldn't work with the patriarchy anymore and there was too much bureaucracy in the BBC? No, they chucked me out. You were sacked from the BBC? I was, yes. 
Which these days is very rare. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They said I was... Uh, well, I only found out many years later that I was a dangerous lefty. Really? And what was yes. your job meant to be? A dangerous... A normal no, lefty or... no. <laughs> I was supposed to be uh, making play school. You were supposed... <laughs> <laughs> ah. Amazing. You were, you were too dangerous for play school. Yeah. <laughs> they thought that I might write in, in the script, maybe some little bit between when they went, hello, hello again. But somewhere in between there, I'd go, hello, Communist Manifesto, hello again. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. You can see why they were concerned. Yeah. <laughs> now, the next round is called You or Him slash Her. In this round, contestants may choose to answer questions about themselves or take a risk and field a question about their opponent, which is worth double points. Alex, can you just explain the whole doubling points system, please? Yes, well, doubling points is a way of increasing... The points. So if you have, <laughs> I have a, uh, I have a calculator. So if you mark any number, I can double it for you using. Uh, oh, okay, uh, eight. I know that one. I can type it. Sixteen. I've, sixteen. Oh, yeah. Sixteen. Uh... <laughs> okay. Um, so using the calculator, we'll be doubling the points if mm. they do answer about the opponent, or they can answer, play it safe. Answer. There's a lot of tactics. We're ready to play you or him slash her. Let's play. We need answers. <laughs> Good. You're going to get whiplash. <laughs> uh, Jermaine, hello. I'd like yeah. to answer a question about Michael, babe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this question comes in two parts. Number one, and this is not in the text, but I love you. <laughs> Number two, did Michael Rosen once drive from London to Annecy, in brackets in the French Alps, as if you didn't know, with no clothes on to raise money for charity. <laughs> Michael, try not to give anything away by your expression. Because it's such an adorable idea, I'm going to say yes. He did. No, Tim, you had clothes. What does on. the messaging service say? He's done lots of fun things without any clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> but driving to the Alps isn't one of them. Oh. Oh. Michael, mm. you or him, stroke her, Jermaine. Moi. Marvellous Jermaine. I'll go with Marvellous Jermaine. Marvellous Jermaine. Well, why not? Can Jermaine Greer change a car tyre all on her own? <laughs> that was texted in. Yeah. Yeah. She is perfectly capable of changing a car tyre. She is also capable of arranging for a mechanic to come and change it for her. Basically, she can do anything, because she's a woman, and they can do absolutely anything. Never fear, because it's Jermaine Greer. She is a woman and a writer, and she mainly writes about women. <laughs> OK, you or him, Jermaine? Him. Here we go, then. Is Michael Rosen an anagram of Sir Henry Chameleon? <laughs> and if not, which letters are we short? <laughs> <laughs> and um, if it helps, you're allowed to think. No. It's, it's not, not. Yes, yeah, that's already two points. Oh, yes, two points for Greer. But which letters is it lacking stroke over? Oh, over? It could be. Well, you yeah, which... beast, you just crept I am not in. a beast, thank you. <laughs> I am just a man. We are not all beasts. <laughs> Excuse me. I can't do it! I'm going to give you two points, but move this on because it's going on too long. OK, <laughs> I agree. Michael Rosen is an anagram of Sir Chameleon, but his name lacks Henry. <laughs> Michael, you or him? Stroke her. <laughs> oh, I'll go with Jermaine. Yeah. Jermaine Greer. OK. Uh, is Jermaine Greer the one who threw herself in front of the racehorse? <laughs> uh, no, that was Madonna. <laughs> it's half marks, I'm afraid. The answer is right. No, she didn't. Yeah. But it, it was Emily Davison, the suffragette who got trampled and killed under Anmer, the horse owned by King George V, in 1913. According to the text answering system, Jermaine would never have done this. Yeah, is that true? Do you think you ever, in the same circumstances, that you would have flung yourself in front of a horse? No. OK. <laughs> and that's the end of the round. <laughs> And 
And at the end of that round, Jermaine Greer has three points, but out in front with ten points is Michael Rosen. Yeah. Well, it's time now for something a bit different, a daunting physical challenge. <laughs> Now, in this round, contestants will be set a physical challenge based on a question which someone has texted in. Alex, can we see this week's question, please? <laughs> ah, <there you> are. <laughs> yes, a suspenseful sound effect there. And the question is, who's better at reading, men or the other type, women? <laughs> now, uh, we've got a man and a woman here, so we'll be using them to answer this question. They will take it in turns to read a sentence from an actual book. Whoever can keep reading for the longer gets the points. You may be thinking, well, they'll just keep on going forever, won't they? Right? <laughs> Wrong. Because after each sentence, we'll be dangerously reducing the font size. Ooh. <gasps> yes, a bit of danger, a bit of literature. Let's play We Need Answers Physical Challenge. <laughs> OK. Contestants, are you ready to read? Mm. Yes. Tim, have you got your books? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay, without further ado, let's have the first book. The first book is Sophie's World mm. by uh, Justine Garder. Yes. Pop philosophy classic, Sophie's World. Jermaine, if I could ask you to read the words on the screen. So this is the first font size. You'd expect her to get this. <laughs> school? Pardon. I said school. Yes, yeah, she's oh. got it! <laughs> No problem. And that <laughs> immediately puts pressure on Rosen, who now has to stay in the game by answering uh, another one. It's the same book. If you could read that, please. Michael. Again, you would back him to get this. <laughs> well, hello, Alice. Mind if I join you? Rosen's got it, and that's <laughs> easy! Absolutely. Fair enough. Yeah. The level of reading so far has been what you'd expect from these two uh, <laughs> icons of literature. Very good. We're dropping a, <laughs> dropping a further six points now. This one's a hell of a book. Coma by Robin Cook. Oh. <laughs> Not to be confused with comma. A comma breaks up a sentence, a coma breaks up your life. <laughs> and this book is a shock-packed chiller. It was hot. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Can you stop giggling now? Sorry. Yes, come on, this is not It a was show. hard for Susan to believe the clock next to the bed. Oh, it's so perfect. perfect. It's, good. it's good. It's good. Michael, yeah. on you go. She lay with one arm lewdly draped <laughs> over the toilet. Yes, uh, now we're uh, cracking uh, it. Come on, get in there. Get rid of this piece of filth. <laughs> we're down to uh, font number 14. If you want to double that. 28, that there would be with the yeah. doubling machine. <laughs> Making loose covers and cushions. Ah, uh, that's our next book. Making loose covers and cushions. By Dorothy Gates. Jermaine. To my dear sister and brother-in-law, Rose and Barry. Very nice indeed. <laughs> yes, once again, no problem. That was, uh, a, that was a dedication. It was from the dedication, yes. <laughs> Lay the paper on the fabric and cut. So confident still. <laughs> But the font size is going to shrink even more now. It's a dirty dozen. It's 12, which I used to write letters in. It's there 12. we are. <laughs> and we're also moving on to the thorny issue of Pitta. Pitta bread. And this book is called, Tim? Uh, Pitta the Great. There we are. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Let's just get on with the reading, shall we, Jermaine? Spoon the salad into the pitta. Yeah. It's that type of book. Good. <laughs> Michael with a lot of pressure on him now. <laughs> Spoon the chicken into the pit. Yes! yes. <laughs> uh, a pretty suspenseful tome, that one. The next font is triple figures. It's 10.5. Oh. <laughs> so we're on to 10.5 now. This is a small font. This will not be easy. Tim, what's the book? Giant dump trucks. Yes, the book is the old oh, favourite, Giant one. Dump Trucks. <laughs> Again, they'll be familiar with this book, but will they be able to read this sentence? Special slag carriers with solid rubber tyres and underground side clumpers with two-way controls and steering on all four wheels. Well... Yeah. Yeah. Well, you yeah. might almost have thought that Jermaine had that book memorised, except that... Dumpers and clumpers. It wasn't clumpers, it was dumpers! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Which means that Michael can win and prove that men are better than women at reading and therefore, <laughs> by extension, at everything, uh, <laughs> if and only if he's able to read his sentence without, as Jermaine did, making one error. Michael. 
has to be out loud, Michael. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So, what, so the machine shown had pivot steering. <laughs> but most subsequent lector halls <laughs> have been two uh, axle uh, rigids. Wow. One mistake. One mistake. Lectra. He said lector. It was lectra. It's a mistake we've all made when talking about dumpers. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> That means we have a situation with one mistake each, which means the competition is a dead heat. <laughs> well, 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 one point each to Jermaine Greer and Michael Rosen. <laughs> and after that uh, exciting literary challenge, let's go back over to Alex for some of his analysis. Alex. Thank you, Mark. Um, <laughs> I've just been, uh, well, donated a wonderful piece of equipment where I can play, uh, well, I can sort of replay the action in the form of a... Well, it's an action, an action replay, and if we look at the screen here, I've got, a, I've got a simple pen, but I can make notes on the screen. For example, I can underline the actual words spoken. And what I like to do is highlight this man here, who uh, is, as far as I can tell, Michael Rosen. And uh, you can see the arms, tensed, tense arms. I'm just going to use a straight line with a bit of some white ink to look there. These, these are going to spring into action and do a sort of rowing motion. OK. A rowing motion. So if we if we play the tape now, we just imagine the boat. I can draw the boat. I can I can attempt to to draw the boat. Imagine that and, and the oars, the oars there, the oars going back and forth. He's, he's piling through the water, through the water, and off he goes. Thanks, Alex. That's all right. <laughs> And that means that the scores are now Jermaine Greer on four points, Michael Rosen had on 11 points. <laughs> and so now it's on to the final quick-fire round. It's fingers on buzzers in this round, so can we test the buzzers, please, Jermaine? GG. <laughs> and Michael. Mike. <laughs> this one is spare. <laughs> The unlikely events that uh, one of them runs out of buzzers, we have a replacement. <laughs> and they will need those buzzers because to spice things up in this round, everything is against the clock. Time will be up when Jermaine's face meets Michael's. And in addition to all this other stress and strain, every question in this round is for double points. Alex, can you just refresh our memories on doubling? Yes. <laughs> no, solar powered and it's gone. It's gone. No, okay. solar powered. <laughs> <laughs> Let's play We Need Answers. <laughs> OK, so, our final round, then, Jermaine. Shall we play? Sure. <laughs> Does a frog have arms? Yes. Mike. Ooh. I'll go with yes. Yes, it does! Uh, yes. <laughs> Their arms act as shock absorbers. What was the first Mr Man book? Mike. Uh, Mr Tickle. It's right! Yeah! yeah! First published in 1971. Mr. Tickle had exceedingly long arms. Didn't he? How should one pronounce posthumous? <laughs> G -G. Posthumous. Yes! yes! Good one. How did Gaudi die? Well, Mike. In bed. <laughs> no. Antonio Gaudi, 1852 to 1926, Spanish Art Nouveau architect, was reclusive and died run down by a tram. And because he was reclusive, they thought he was a tramp when they found his body, rather than the great artist he'd been. Quick fire, quick fire. Who wrote Lord of the Flies? GG. William Golding. Yes, he did! <laughs> Beelzebub means Lord of the Flies. That's a fact. Also, Golding's other books included The Spire and The Inheritors, which is impossible to understand. Uh, I've got one more fact about Lord of the Flies. It's a great read. <laughs> <laughs> And that's the end of the round and the end of the game! Oh. He's gone. Well, it's been quite a contest, but we're now ready to go through the final scores in suspenseful reverse order. Alex, can we have a tension fueled drum roll, please? <laughs> in second place, with eight points, tonight's runner up is Jermaine Greer! <laughs> oh. And now, traditionally, the loser is invited to trudge off stage in a melancholy fashion, wearing the clogs of defeat. So, uh, <laughs> Tim's got the clogs there. Tim, can you escort Jermaine off through the door, please? Yeah. Just to clarify, we are the only quiz show with a door. <laughs> <laughs>
Or if it was going to happen, that was the moment. <laughs> Off she goes, clumping. <laughs> silence, please. Respectful silence. Good heavens. <laughs> Jermaine Greer leaves. Dejected, it was Jermaine Greer. <laughs> well, <laughs> which means that our winner tonight with a grand total of 19 points is, of course, Michael Rosen. <laughs> Congratulations, Michael. Now, oh, you, you have earned 19 points, which are yours to keep eternally. Alex is over there uh, just printing off your certificate now. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and whatever happens, uh, those points are yours forever. But, Michael, <laughs> as well as keeping your certificate, you can, if you wish, choose to answer an extra question for a cash prize. Ooh. Or we could just end the show here. Up to you, really. <laughs> uh, first of all, before you make a decision, Alex, can we see how much money is in the prize pot tonight, please? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. oh, it's, it's stopped on the first one in the end. Still, £30. Better than a smack in the chops. So, Michael, would you like to gamble for £30 or just make do with a certificate? Which you do get in any case, so it shouldn't be the most difficult decision. <laughs> but uh, if you like audience, you can encourage him one way or the other by shouting out, gamble, g or alternatively, no, this bit's extraneous. <laughs> gamble! <laughs> Going for it. Yeah! <laughs> so, Michael, you have chosen to gamble, and we'd like to ask you to mount the gambling mat. <laughs> All right. Oh, all right. There we are. Now, Michael, you'll have 30 seconds to answer this, so don't rush into anything uh, rash or that's stupid. a pound a second. Yes, that's right. So, take t exactly. Think about it in those terms and you won't rush into an answer. You'll give this question due consideration. Are you ready for your big money showdown question? I am ready. Tim has three envelopes. Mm -hmm. uh, or envelopes, some people call them. It's a class distinction. Um, <laughs> Michael, choose an envelope. <laughs> um, <laughs> There we are. So Michael's chosen that envelope. He will now be asked the big money showdown question for 30 quid. Good luck, Michael. Dear old Michael, what book is the most commonly stolen from bookshops? <sighs> Ooh, so there's a question oh. about crime, about literature. If you're watching, the BBC doesn't uh, advise stealing. <laughs> That's suspense. Thank you. Michael, have you thought about what book is the most commonly stolen? I have, and I'm going for The Highway Code by HMSO. Oh, he's gone for The Highway Code. What's your reasoning, Michael? Michael? That people think that they shouldn't have to pay for it. Yes, because it's general knowledge. <laughs> yes, yeah. except it isn't because they haven't got the general knowledge, that's yeah. why they nick it. So it's more specific knowledge? Yes. Mm. So this is for £30. Tim, can you reveal the answer? No, mate, it's the Bible. Oh. That's the Bible, oh. the single most the shoplifted book. You can't! It seems to set people's pulses racing. Stealing a book about God. Yeah. Sex books are often stolen too. There you are, so Michael Rosen does not win the £30. The Bible is the most stolen book. Michael Rosen is still tonight's We Need Answers winner. Thank you to Michael Rosen. Moses said thou shalt not steal. To our guest, Jermaine Greer. Moses done. And to everyone who takes in the question. See you next time on We Need Answers. Good night. <laughs> We're off in search of a modern definition of nationality next tonight here on BBC Four in Citizen Smith. <laughs>